Welcome to Darkseed, a psychological horror point-and-click adventure game published by CyberDreams, with artwork from H.R. Geiger, the acclaimed sci-fi surrealist painter whose work inspired the movie Alien. You play as Mike Dawson, a science fiction writer who's just purchased an old Victorian house. He's also portrayed by one of the game's programmers of the same name. So what is this? A horror game with artwork by H.R. Geiger sounds amazing. His name seems right there on the front cover. Well, Cyberdream approached him about providing artwork and he accepted. However, he wasn't happy with the game's small 320 by 200 for post resolution, so the developer settled on the 640x350 model, which sadly had the side effect of reducing the colour palette from 256 colours down to 16. But I think that's the right choice because the artwork is just astounding, the game lives and breathes on it and it wouldn't be the same if it was tiny and indistinguishable. Sadly in the 90s you couldn't always eat your cake and have it too, there were a lot of technological limitations. But anyway, Mike has been having some disturbing dreams lately so let's jump into it and discover exactly what's going on. That sure was some nightmare. It even left me with a monster headache. That's genuinely disturbing, but it's a damn interesting kind of horror. I always find things scary and more unnerving when they're confusing, and you don't really know what's happening or why. And combined with that artwork, Dark Seed is off to a great start. Well, anyway, that nightmare has given Mike a pretty bad headache, so we have to take some painkillers in the medical cabinet and then go for a shower. He showers with his clothes on for some reason, I don't really know why, I suppose it's easier than taking them off and putting them in the washing machine. Kind of a two birds with one stone kind of deal. Listen to that background music in the house, it really puts you on edge. This dilapidated room gives me the chills. Must be the cold draft. So we find a library card in the coat pocket, we better return that later. We walk downstairs into That's the living room really and see some pretty disturbing artwork, an alien woman with huge with robotics. Kinda looks like Showdown from System Shock. And look, there's even an alien in the corner there. In the study we find blueprints to the house and it shows us that there's a secret passage. We open it up and find a rope. Personally, this would be enough for me to get the fuck out of this house already, but Mike is a pretty calm guy. There's a secret door here. Up in the attic we find a watch to track the game's time. We move the trunk out of the way, tie the rope around the gargoyle and climb into the backyard. In the garage we find some gloves in the glove box and a crowbar in the boot. Hmm, this should let us open the trunk in the attic. Inside we find a diary from the previous house's owner. Not long after I moved into this house I began to get some terrible headaches. I never suspected what was wrong until I started seeing things shift back and forth before my eyes. People's faces, even places in my own house. Something terrible was going on. So terrible no one would have even guessed. I found my answers on the other side, but I grew so fearful that I moved the mirror to the garage for fear that something would come through to attack me. Who are these ancients? Why do they want so badly to come to our world? What distant galaxy did they come from? I have tried to find these answers, but I cannot pass the century which guards the way to the archives. If I only had more time, but it is obvious to me, and then that's it. Well, that's ominous. So what have we learned? The mirror is some kind of gateway to the other side. The previous owner was having the same headaches as we are, and beings from a distant galaxy have come to our world. Hmm. Oh, is that the doorbell? I wonder who's ringing? What the hell is this? Oh, what? What is going on? Who sent us that package? It's it's not even in our inventory. Where's it gone? What what was any of that? Well, Mike has no reaction to it, so I guess we'll continue. Ah, now the phone is ringing. Hello. Hello, Mike. This is Sue at the library. We have a book on hold for you, so please drop by sometime. Okay then, let's get that book. The music once you're outside is so cheerful. It's a calm neighborhood out here. My house seems somehow out of time. A relic of a dark past. Or perhaps a dark future. It's a bit jarring, but it works to make the Victorian house all that more creepy. What does the newspaper say? 
Apparently there's been crime waves in the town. Hmm. Down in the library we return the card. She seems pretty nice. She's an extremely beautiful woman. This card really should be kept with the book. You'll find that one in aisle C. It's the one with the green cover. Okay, so let's go check out the book. Oh, there's a piece of paper. What's this say? Well, it seems to be the former owner hiding pieces of his diary. It hopes that someone else can solve the mystery that's been plaguing him. Apparently an old man named Tuttle grabbed the key to his grandfather clock and then swallowed it as a joke, then he abruptly died. The owner needs the key to service the clock and now that he's gone, the only way for us to get the key is to go down to the cemetery. Hmm. Before we leave the library, there's something else we need to get. Do you see it? Well, we need a bobby pin that's laying on the ground. Do you see it yet? No? It's this tiny black speck laying on the ground. Who the fuck would ever see that? This isn't optional. You need this to complete the game and nobody tells you that you need to get it either. It's insane! This kind of thing is so prevalent in old point and click games and it just ruins the entire thing. Imagine getting HR Geiger to do the work on your game. Imagine the developer spending hundreds of hours working on it. Then imagine the player never being able to see all that work because they didn't notice a tiny fucking speck on the ground. What a joke. Who came up with this? Oh well, forget it. On the way to the cemetery we go to the general store and buy a bottle of scotch. Our neighbour greets us and apparently he's a lawyer. He says we can get together sometime tomorrow around 6 and he gives us his business card. It says get out of jail free in capital letters which is pretty funny. Inside the cemetery we enter the mausoleum and find the clock key inside Tuttle's earth. Then the coroner noticed that there was a key inside his ashes. Why didn't it burn along with his body? Oh well. We go home and take a look at the mirror. The movers took it in from the garage and apparently a piece is broken off. I wonder what that means. Oh, phone's ringing again. Apparently there's a book for us at the library. What? We were just there. Hi Mike. Here's the book that was put on hold for you. Tune into the right station, it's referring to the car radio, sometimes it will give you useful hints for the game. Back home again and we use the key on the grandfather clock. Inside we see a name, John McKeegan. Hmm, now we have to wait until night, but we can fast forward the clock by pressing T. Now this is strange, there's a time mechanic in Dark Seed, it's incredibly unusual and everybody hates it. A lot of puzzles and events are time sensitive and honestly playing this game blind you may never even know that. It's incredibly easy to get locked out winning a game without ever knowing because you spend too long doing something or you miss being in a certain area at a certain time. It's dumb. Oh well, time to sleep. End of day one. <laughs> I love the moustache. These nightmares have given me a mean headache. These dreams are definitely getting more disturbing and the headaches are getting worse too. Just like before, we take some painkillers and go for a shower. Oh, there's another package. It's a broken mirror piece the movers forgot to give us before. We fix it in place and this allows us to travel to the other side. An unnatural glow emanates from the chamber. Strange machines provide energy, nourishing the creatures cocooned in their sacks. Oh wow, this is terrifying. It's legitimately disturbing. These aliens are cocooned in sacks, waiting to birth themselves. The sudden change of colour palette really works to a haunting effect. Just the very idea too. The idea that somewhere in your home there's another world where they're operating on you while you sleep. Planning something malicious. Ah, oh, it just makes my skin crawl. We find the design room as he plans for a biological experiment on a human. Some kind of alien fetus embedded into a human brain. The same nightmare we had in the beginning. And we're having headaches. Did this happen to us? It must have. How does it work though? The uncertainty of what's happening genuinely leaves you on edge. We wander around and go through a teleporter. I feel like a cold wind just ran through my bones. That machinery hum sets my teeth on edge. 
Outside we find a distant alien landscape and a pair of binoculars. Obviously the previous owner of the house must have explored on the other side too. The artwork is just astounding. Don't you wish H.R. Geiger had personally worked on more games? Anyway, we go outside the structure. This is the outside of the alien edifice. It reminds me somewhat of the front of my own house. So, this is an other side representation of our own house. These are aliens, apparently, but they seem more like interdimensional beings. Everything in this side of the mirror is a demented version of the normal world, it seems. We wander the alien landscapes. You can see faces inside structures, like they're trapped against their will. An array of vents and what looks like arteries. Ah, oh, I want to get out of it. Inside of a cave we find a shovel. That's all we need for now. Let's just get back out of here before something terrible happens. We're back from the other side, the dark world, and we immediately go down to the cemetery. Inside the cemetery we find John McKeegan's grave and dig it up. That's a torn page from the diary. The mirror. I used it to enter into the dark world and I suspect my fate is tied to the strange creatures I've seen hibernating there. I have excavated a bit and brought back something. In the process I managed to crack the edge of the mirror, which I had thought was unbreakable. The thing I brought back might be able to break it, if made into a tool. I will have this final page left in my grave, though I doubt my fate is to remain there long. One final word. My enemies have underestimated how strongly events in this world affect things in the other. I have kept them from returning to space by letting my car fall apart. I even hid the keys in a special place. I also feel that the police station is strongly mirrored in the dark world. Use this information wisely. You might succeed where I have surely failed. Okay, so John McKeegan is the previous owner. We've learned a lot of things here. You can possibly bring something back from the dark world and break the mirror. Everything that happens in this world is mirrored on the other side, to some degree. The broken car in the garage is preventing them from returning to space, and the keys are hidden somewhere, along with the police station being strongly mirrored in the dark world. Okay, that's a lot. How does this work then? The dark world is more like a parallel universe than anything else, yet they are aliens with spaceships. It's confusing as hell, but somehow it does make it more unsettling. <laughs> oh damn, a policeman's waiting for us. Apparently digging up people's graves is frowned upon. You're under arrest, Mr. Dawson. Come with me. What a cold and uninviting place. I never thought I'd be spending a night in here. Okay, so what do we know about the police station? It's strongly mirrored in the dark world. In fact, so are some of the people. The residents have their own counterparts in the dark world. So we hide our smaller inventory items under the pillow, ring the cell's bars, and show the policeman our get out of jail free card. Next we steal the gun hanging on the wall in the empty station. Nothing dangerous about that. Remember when our neighbour said he'd meet us at 6? Well, we have to wait for him, and when he comes we watch him play fetch with the dog. We give him some scotch and then take the stick. Time to go back to the other side. This alien park was obviously engineered by creatures with a bizarre and cruel sense of humour. We continue walking along the twisted landscape. There's a giant ball in the centre with a crazy assortment of eyes and mouths. It's really freaky. We see an alien beast, the dark world version of the dog we just saw, guarding a narrow bridge. We throw the stick into the abyss and he jumps in after it. We enter the dark world police station and the parallel version of the cop places us under arrest. So that's where my gun went. You're going to rot for a few centuries, human. Alien graffiti scars the walls. No one who enters here ever leaves alive. Luckily, we have just the thing, the bobby pin we picked up in the library earlier. Thank God we noticed that tiny speck on the ground or we'd be fucked. We pick up the inventory we stashed under the pillow and pick the lock. Outside we see an alien and in exchange for the bobby pin he gives us an invisibility headband. As you may have guessed, it makes us invisible and allows us to pass this strange, brain-like alien guard in the archives. You're in the Great Archive Chamber. Many of the ancient secrets are available here for those who know how to access them. Inside the archive we switch on the terminal and we see the alien woman who's been helping us. Greetings, Michael. I've been sending you messages over the radio. The ancients have implanted an alien embryo into your brain. If born, this creature will destroy you and all of mankind. You must find the ancient power source and destroy it. Also, the police in your world are under the control of the ancient. Avoid them at all costs. Hurry, and good luck. Well, that says it all. We rush back and exit the dark world. Time to go to sleep. End of day two. What the fuck does this even mean?
both my headache and these nightmares are getting worse. I suppose the alien growing in our brain is about ready to burst. Like always, we have to take painkillers and then go for a shower. Personally, I'd be the fuck out of that house the moment I stepped through that mirror, but it's up to Mike, I guess. Well, anyway, the Keep of the Scrolls gave us more than just information. She gave us a microfilm too, and we can play it at the library. So what's this say? Home security. A good hiding spot in the home is a hollowed out area beneath a flagstone in the cellar. Well, we know where to go now, but first let's go buy some more scotch. We go home and the doorbell is ringing again. This time it's a handle, prepaid. Hmm. So we walk down into the cellar. On the floor we find a loose rock and a set of keys. The car keys. Time to enter the dark world again. We go back into the cave where we found the shovel in the beginning. Further in we find the main power supply room. On the wall is a nexus with a rectangular hole, so we put the stone in the nexus. The stone seems energized and warm to the touch. Hmm. So we join the handle to the flagstone rock and create a hammer. We put the hammer in the nexus and charge it again. We've just created an alien weapon made of immeasurably dense material. Remember how the previous owner who came here managed to damage the mirror? Anyway, let's get back home. Oh, the phone is ringing now. Remember, anything seen in the mirror is not real. Only the mirror itself is real. Wait, what? Does that make sense? What the fuck is happening here? We go up to the balcony and climb the rope into the backyard. There's a policeman waiting to arrest us out the front, which wouldn't be fun. We go into the garage and put the scotch into the car's gas tank. We put the car keys in the ignition and power it on. Back to the dark world, one last time. Remember how one of the diary notes said that, by letting the car fall apart, Mr. McKeegan had prevented the aliens from returning to space? Like we enter the spaceship control room and pull the lever with the gloves we got in the beginning of the game. Oh fuck, here we go. You have just engaged the main engine startup sequence. The ship is gone, let's do this, let's smash this damn mirror with the hammer and end it once and for fucking all. I'm not really sure why I'm here, but I just felt drawn to you. I know it sounds strange, but what's even more strange is that I found these pills in my purse. It's a prescription filled in your name for relief of severe headaches. I'm just beginning to understand. And that's the end. Uh, so the Keeper of the Scrolls, the alien who was helping us, I don't know why, was the librarian's counterpart in the Dark World. These pills she's given us should destroy the alien fetus in our brain. But we did it. The ancients had no ship, no power source, and no way to enter our world. Yeah, it's a bit of a shit ending. In fact, it's a terrible ending. And it's been universally panned. You're just beginning to understand? Well, I'm not. The player isn't. What the fuck was that? Some ambiguity is good, but what the fuck were the rules there? Ancients, aliens, dark worlders, they come from space, but they also exist in a kind of parallel world to us. And so do some of the people in the town, it's crazy. The game is just way too fucking short, to be honest. The gameplay is atrocious. I didn't highlight it massively, but the time mechanic and the absolute absurdity of some of the things you have to do is abysmal. Yeah, you probably won't enjoy playing it, and it's a shame since this game had so much potential. The story was down. It could have gotten better and better. The art was amazing. HR Geiger completely sold it. It had some of the most frightening, unnerving, and beautiful visuals out of any psychological horror game I've ever played. And it's a cult classic for a reason, but yeah. I'm just beginning to understand. I hope you enjoyed the journey guys. Subscribe if you like it and there'll be more weird and wonderful games to frighten and intrigue you. Please share the video any way you can. I'm a very small YouTuber and if you like it, it'd really help me grow. Goodbye and remember, if you're having any strange dreams, be sure to check your mirror. Only the mirror itself is real. Wait, what? Does that make sense? What the fuck is happening here?